Hey everybody, in this video I want to talk about one of my favorite pieces of tech, the Focusrite 2i2. When it comes to listening to music, watching videos, sounding good on video conferences or doing any sort of audio recording, the integrated microphones and speakers in devices like computers, notebooks, smartphones and even dedicated screens hit their performance ceiling really quickly. Once you get into these devices, you'll find very quickly that just the microphone itself won't do it. Most microphones need some sort of pre-amplifier to make the signal hot enough. You need some sort of analog to digital converter to make the signal readable by your computer. And especially when it comes to condenser microphones, you need what's called phantom power, a 48 volt voltage that you need to drive the microphone. But it's not only microphones. Also headphones, especially ones with high impedance, need good headphone amplifiers to sound good and loud enough for you to properly hear. For example, this pair of Biodynamic DT770 has a 250 ohm impedance and if you connect it straight to a computer, they are quite low in volume. So connecting them to a proper headphone preamp will already get you a long way to get a good sound out of these headphones. Having said all of this, you'll find that an external audio interface can offer you all these things and more. However, pro-grade audio interfaces are usually big, heavy, clunky and they often use very exotic connectors that are not even in use anymore. For instance, this is a Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40. In addition to requiring external power, it connects to a computer using Firewire 400, a port that's so old that I literally need three adapters to connect this interface to my MacBook Pro. While this interface always provides me with good audio quality for more professional applications, it's just too inconvenient for daily use. Here's where today's piece of tech comes in. This then is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 3rd gen. As you can see, it's quite compact. Compact enough to live on my desk without occupying too much space. Even compact enough to come on trips with me in my backpack. Let's take a tour of the interface and see what it has to offer for 150 euros and why I love it so much. By the way, all of the audio you hear in this video was recorded on this very interface in combination with either a Rode NT1A or a Sennheiser MKE600. Starting with the outside, the interface is made from this red aluminum, which does feel quite high quality. The front and bag is made from black glossy plastic, and when pressing on it, it does move a little bit, which does not feel super high quality. But I wouldn't say that this is something to worry about. Moving to the front of the interface, you see two XLR quarter inch combo inputs. Each one of these has a gain knob and two buttons. One to calibrate the input to instrument level and another labeled air. This button emulates an older Focusrite preamp and lifts the higher frequencies a little. I always keep this off for recording since it raises the noise floor of the interface a bit and I can easily add a very similar effect in post. However, it's quite cool for radio conferences where I don't use any post processing. Moving more to the right side, you find a button that enables the 48 volt phantom power for both of the inputs. Focusrite recently updated the firmware of the interface to provide the option to also remember the setting when the interface is powered down and back up. Below the phantom power button, you can find a button for direct monitoring. This means that the input is directly played to the monitoring output, such as the speakers or your headphones. This is especially useful when recording vocals because then the singer or speaker can hear their own voice. Finally, we find a big knob that adjusts the output level of the main monitor output and next to it a smaller knob with a quarter inch headphone jack to connect your headphones and adjust their output level to your liking. So much for the front. Let's continue to the back side. Here we find two mono quarter inch outputs for speakers, a USB-C port and a Kensington lock. Let's talk about that USB-C port for a second. This port is one of the greatest features of this interface in my opinion. The entire interface is bus powered. What that means is that it draws power from the USB host device directly and doesn't require additional power. So you can simply connect your 2i2 to whatever USB device you have and get going, even on the move without access to a power socket. Moreover, this interface doesn't require as high data rates as bigger interfaces and gets away with a simple USB port for data transfer. Hence, it can easily connect to an iPad Pro any USB equipped computer or even the smartphone if that smartphone can provide enough power. That last part unfortunately means that lightning equipped devices won't work. 
but most USB-C equipped Android phones should be able to run this interface just fine. So for instance, when I'm on my terrace trying to do a video conference outside when the weather is good, I can totally hook up this Focusrite 2i2 using a single USB-C cable to my iPad Pro and then connect it to a good shotgun microphone like this MKE 600 and then do video conferences even outside with a lot of background noise. So for example, we have um, someone mowing their lawn and in the background we also have people talking. But you can hear it's pretty much only me and for a video conference this would totally be acceptable in my opinion. Now admittedly this is probably not the most portable setup ever, but for my own garden, for my own terrace outside, when I set this up once when the weather is nice, I would say this is totally acceptable and portable enough. Let's have a look at how the 2i2 is integrated into my desk setup. Its monitor output is hooked up to a pair of Teufel CC100s. The headphone port runs to a pair of Biodynamic DT770 Pro. I mounted the headphones under my desk so they're always easily accessible. Moreover, I have a Rode NT1A hooked up to it for video conferences or voiceover recordings. Finally, the USB-C port is hooked up to a USB hub that in turn is connected to my monitor. That way, I run the whole setup of a single cable. Finally, I have a few closing thoughts on this interface. There are some interfaces on the market with very similar feature sets to this one, and I am not necessarily recommending the 2i2 in specific, but a audio interface that is USB-C bus powered, so that you can use it on the go and without external power, and also an interface with very nice clean preamps. For example, the Motu M2 is one of the interfaces that I didn't have a chance to test yet and that I would really love to test. In my unscientific testing and to my ears, the preamps in the 2i2 sound very good and so far my microphones have had a higher noise floor than the interface's preamps themselves, so the MKE600 and the NT1A were always noisier than the preamps, so you can basically just crank the gain and it would be fine so far at least in my testing with this 2i2 unit. I would love to test something like the Moto M2 in the future. It's slightly more expensive. I have heard very good things about its preamps, so maybe this would be something to test in the future. But for now, I'm very happy with the Scarlett 2i2 and I can recommend it. So these were my thoughts on the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 third gen. This is kind of a mini review, but keep in mind that I haven't done any scientific testing on this interface, no measurements, nothing like that. I've just used this interface for a few months now, been very happy with it in my applications. I've tested it with three microphones so far, with all of them it performed flawlessly and perfect. I use it for vocal recording, voiceover recordings and I use it to listen to music and videos every day and I even mix with the preamp, with the uh, headphone preamp in this interface. So from my testing I've been very happy with it. I would love to get a hand on the Moto M2 in the future and test that one. But for now, this one does it all for me and I can really recommend it. If you liked this video in particular, I would ask you to hit the like button below. And if you want to see more videos on tech, lifestyle, productivity and software engineering, I invite you to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date. Thank you for your time and I wish you a great day.